Okay, so I really wanted us to look at some box on a box questions. So we'll do three boxes stacked up. I'll give each box um, a mass and make these numbers nice and friendly. One, two, and three kilograms according to the color coding. Now we'll start putting the forces in. The top box has force of 1g pointing down, but it also has a normal reaction force pointing straight up made by the contact between the blue box and the red box, and we'll call it R1. Now Newton's third law dictates that there should be an opposite force acting on the red box that's of equal size and pointing down. And since they're of equal size, we'll call that R1, 2. They're the same number. On the red box, there's also the weight and its own upward pointing reaction force from the black box. Predictably, again, we have a downward force from the red box onto the black box that's the same as the upward normal, and the weight, and then an upward pointing reaction force. Now, if I wanted to take each of the boxes in turn, oh, hang on, we'll put an acceleration, just to liven things up, um, of one going downwards. So if I dealt using force equals mass times acceleration, to each box separately, I would come up with, well, my first equation is coming up on the board now. That's F equals MA using all the forces acting on the blue box. If I then focused on the red box, I'd have 2G, add R1, which is pointing down, and take away R2, which is pointing up equals ma, so 2 times 1. Now notice there are two unknown reaction forces there. I don't know both of those numbers, so it becomes a bit more difficult. And on the black box, the thing that we'll always miss is the downward pointing force from the top. We don't really like that force, and in fact, in practice, we're not going to be focusing on it. <coughs> we get the equation that you see on the board. Okay, so those three equations, so far, so good. But we really need to see a question to see why we do things the way we do. Okay, so this question, find the force of the red box, find the force the red box imparts on the black box. So this is the force that the red box imparts on the black box. We're not gonna find that force though. We'd actually find R2 in the box above. And if we find the value of R2, we can figure out what that equal and opposite force is. So we're going to get rid of all of the, de of the information about the black box. We're not interested in it. It's not useful. But the, everything above that is really useful. So we're trying to find R2. The way we would do that is add our two equations. And if we added our two equations, R1 would just disappear and we get the equation that you see. Now, this equation is exactly like doing a single object and finding the reaction force of a three kilogram object, i.e. the blue and the red put together. And the reason being, we're actually canceling out equal and opposite forces because we know that they're equal and opposite, R1. They just disappear out of our force diagram. And the two weights just add together to make 3G. So this is why we scoop up the lowest um, object and the, all of the objects above, because the reaction forces are all going to cancel out. This means we don't even have to concern ourselves with R1 to answer this question. Now if we look at a new question, finding the force the black box imparts on the floor... <coughs> Well, that force strictly hasn't been shown yet. So if we draw in the floor and an equal and opposite force to R3, 
That green force is the force we're being asked to find. We're not going to find that force, though. We're going to find R3, because they are equal and opposite. So we're looking for this force. Now, what we can do is solve this system of equations. We can solve them. In fact, one of the quickest ways to solve them is to add them all together. And if we add all of those three equations together, we're going to get 6g. The r2s are going to cancel out, and the r1s are going to cancel out, and we'll be left with negative r3. And if we add together one lot of one, two lots of ones, and three lots of ones, we're going to get six lots of ones. And this is graphically like we've cancelled out R2 because they're equal and opposite, R1 because they're equal and opposite, and we've gathered together all of the weights to make 6G. So in effect, what we've done is we've deleted all of the guts of the problem, we've got rid of the other two reaction forces in the middle, and we've gathered together and treated this like one object of mass 6. And that is what you get when you when you apply F equals MA to that situation, you get the answer at the bottom. And it's like a fast track way to answering the question. You take the lowest box that you are interested in, and you take all of the masses above it and treat it as a single object. And the reason is those pairs of forces that act, one on the box above and one on the box below.